My name is Bez Idakla. Um, I'm a musician, instrumentalist, composer, producer, <laughs> many things in the music genre. Um, I currently lead the alternative music scene. Um, I also started as a pioneer for the alternative music scene in Nigeria. Music for me has been, I mean, this journey for music has been very interesting. Uh, I grew up in a musical family. My dad played the guitar, my mom sang with him. So I grew up in that kind of environment. And I was influenced by the music that they listened to and the music that they played. Uh, eventually, my dad taught me how to play the guitar. And I was playing in choirs in school, in secondary school and university. Um, I had to sort of find my path and know exactly my purpose in life and why I was created. So I delved into some reading, some studying, and I found that my purpose was to add value to people through music. And that was in university. So after university, I immediately entered the music scene and I didn't know how to do it. My sister had started a, a an open mic event called Taroa. So that was where I started. I played the guitar there for about three years. I played for everybody. I played my music. And that was how my journey started. Kobams discovered me through Taroa and we started working together towards the first album that I created in 2011, which is Super Sun. So that was how <laughs> the journey started for me. Initially, when I started music, I used to describe my style as alternative music, and that was what gave birth to that whole alternative music scene. Uh, but eventually, I would, I would say right now, it's, it's fusion, it's mainly fusion, because yes, alternative was that word that gave me the ability to play with a lot of sounds, you know, in music. But now, fusion is, I think it's a, it's a more apt description of that sound because I include a lot of sound. So for the music that I create now, I would say it's Afrofusion, but it may change <laughs> for the next project. I do music for both the passion and the money, but I mean, obviously the passion was what led me to start creating music and what keeps me to, I mean, keeps me creating. But if it's not sustainable, then I wouldn't be able to create music for, for the, the rest of my life. I need to also make sure that I'm taking care of the business side of it. So it's both. Passion drove me into creating music and keeps me creating. And the business side is also very important as well because my business needs to be sustainable. That journey is so interesting, being away from the music scene for a bit. Um, the, the last album I released was in 2016, and that was Braggy Child. And for me, even when I released that album, I, I don't think that I was in that frame of mind of the album. I had started recording the album in 2013, and that was four years to 2016 before it came out. So I'd moved on from the music, I'd moved on from that space, I felt like I was not really in touch with what was happening in the environment at the time, so I had to take that, you know, much needed break to re-strategize, listen to my mind and what I needed, I really needed to create. So I left the country for a while and I found out that I started creating more because my mind frame changed. Before, it was all about me and the music that I was trying to create and be successful and all of that. But it now changed into pay more attention to other people. And when you pay more attention to other people, you know what they like, you know what relates to them, and you're able to use your platform to help them grow because other people's success will be connected to mine. Uh, because of that, I started creating music based on people's preference, what they love, and making sure that I was a big enough platform to host other people on that platform. So I started something called Artist Hub, which is a gathering of uh, creatives to help them build sustainable and economically viable careers. And for me, that was one of the ways that I could put myself in the shoes of other people and help them grow with their craft. And even having that interaction with different creatives, it inspired me more to create what I'd, I've created for this next album. So um, it was a process of relearning, it was a process of, uh, 
of coming up with new sounds, process of sort of re-strategizing and coming out full. When I went into, into my phase of stepping away from the music scene and recreating myself, I figured that I was really a pioneer in everything I did. And it started with my secondary school, we were the first set, my, my university was the first set. When I stepped into the music industry, I pioneered this alternative music drive. And everywhere I found myself, I was a pioneer. First African to premiere a video internationally, um, and on BT. And that for me was, listen, I am actually the light. And for me to be more effective in what I do, I need to be able to shine that light to a lot of people. And for me to shine that light to a lot of people, I need to be at the height of my career, the pinnacle of my career. And I can't be there by just lay, being laid back as I, as I always was. I need to be more aggressive. I need to make sure that I'm actually a huge superstar or a super son. So um, that was what drove the title for the light because I need to shine that light to people. And with the initiative that I'm doing with Artist Hub as well, I feel like I'm now the definition of shining the light to people. The, the reviews for the album have been really overwhelmingly amazing. And um, I knew it was going to be that way <laughs> because of the spirit behind it and because of the sound that I created as well. And I was very confident that this album will be a hit, will be the best and most impactful of all my projects. And the, the reception has been, like I said, overwhelming and it's been really, really amazing. And I know that a lot of people haven't heard the album yet. So we're doing our job to make sure that uh, the, the marketing is, is really on point so people can hear it because it's really a great body of work. I had some collaborations on the album. Um, one of the, 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 the people that I, you know, that I started working with over, over that period that I was away uh, was the Cavemen. And the Cavemen are a band uh, that do like wild African music from the East. Uh, but make, make, make it very contemporary. And I said, listen, I need to work with this guy. So we, we did a lot of songs on the album together in terms of they played live on the album and helped in creating some of the sounds. And uh, they featured on one song called Beauty, which is one of the most played songs right now globally. And um, I think that was a great collaboration. And again, for what I was trying to do with this album, with the light, that, that theme needed to shine in everything that I did. And I made sure that I worked to people that were not super popular and people that I know that this album would give them a certain kind of mileage and they could leverage off that mileage for their own popularity as well. So I worked with the, the Cavemen. I worked with Insikak, who has been um, a guitarist friend and a producer friend for a while. So he also produced some songs on the album and uh, featured on one of the tracks on the album, which is funny enough, an instrumental that has been <laughs> getting rave reviews as well. And then uh, I featured a rapper called Dap The Contract, who is so amazing. And uh, those were the three features on the album.